Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Notes aren't music. I've been preaching this for a while now and I'm gonna keep saying it over and over and over again. Notes, literal notes in different tones, doesn't equal music. What I mean by that is music is actually everything that you add to those notes or those tones or those pitches to create the sounds that you hear. In this video, I'm gonna show you an example of how you can play the same melody over the same set of chord changes and then solo over that same set of chord changes, but because the styles differ, you have to change the music or all the things that you add to those notes to create the sounds that you wanna hear and that make the most musical sense in the song. Right before I get into it though, I'm incredibly excited to announce that I'm gonna be giving a free live masterclass all about notes don't equal music in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on Saturday, April 22nd. This is gonna be part of the National Jazz Festival, which as the name implies, is a nationwide jazz festival for high school students. There will be big bands, small group combos, vocal groups, and solo acts performing that day. This will be taking place at the Pennsylvania Convention Center right in downtown Philly. And as we get closer to the event, I will give you the exact time in the exact room that I'll be in for the masterclass. I hope to see you there in person. Like I said, the masterclass is free and the entire event is free, but I will be filming it and releasing it afterwards if you can't make it. For the example in this video, I'm gonna be using a 12 bar concert F blues. The melody I'm gonna be using is Charlie Parker's Now's the Time. Here's what it sounds like when you play it as a medium swing. Okay, pretty standard. Now, what does this have to do with notes don't equal music? Well, when I say that, once again, I'm talking about all of the non-note musical elements that you apply to these notes to actually create music. Whenever you play anything on your instrument, whether you're improvising, whether you're playing a melody, playing something written, you should always be thinking about the musical context in which that song occurs. If it's a medium swing, like I just played, what non-note musical elements contribute to that to create the medium swing style. Well, you could look to the main musical elements like rhythm, articulation, dynamics, and phrasing. There are more than that, but really if you focus on those main four non-note musical elements for whatever style you're playing, you're gonna be really locked into that exact musical context. Okay, that's great, but how do you learn these individual non-note musical styles for each style that you're playing? Well, the key is listening. That's right, it always comes back to listening. No matter if you're playing written music or you're improvising or even just playing some exercises, whatever style of music that you're playing, it's important to have reference recordings in your ear and in your mind when you play it. What do I mean by reference recordings? Well, basically, what are some classic and quintessential recordings in that specific style that you're playing? I'm not gonna go through all the reference recordings that I have for different styles. I'm actually gonna be going over that in that live masterclass on April 22nd. But right now, I want you to think of, if we're playing a medium swing, what other medium swing songs have I heard in my life? I will give you one of my all-time favorites for swing, and that's Ella Fitzgerald singing Mac the Knife. The way she does everything in that recording is so amazing, from the way she phrases the words to her articulations, the rhythms, the way she plays with the time. It's so perfect to me, and I really think of that a lot when I'm playing swing. Having multiple different reference recordings for every style you play is super important to being able to reference them while you're playing so you know what fits the current musical situation. Like I said, I'm not gonna be getting into all those reference recordings now or even all the non-note musical elements, but it's incredibly important to be referencing something every time you play. Okay, that's great. So I know medium swing and I know I can play Now's the Time and I can play a Concert F Blues, but what if we took those exact same chord changes in the exact same song and put it into a couple different styles? How about four different styles. I'm now gonna play Now's the Time again, the exact same melody, but I'm gonna play it in four different styles, back to back to back to back. It'll be the exact same chord changes for each chorus, it'll be the exact same tempo for each chorus, the only thing that's different is going to be the style. Take a listen to what this sounds like.
right, pretty interesting, huh? I bet you never heard Now's the Time played in some of those styles. The thing to note is that I actually changed the way I played the melody in each of those choruses. Now, the way I changed them was just based on my reference recordings or what I was hearing in my ear as I played each of those different styles. For those wondering, that was the ever killing iReal Pro. The four styles were swing, pop, funk, cha-cha and pop soul. <laughs> I know it's pretty you know, comical sometimes to hear the computer generated styles, but I hope the point comes across that when you hear these different styles and these different rhythms and all these non-note musical elements with the backing track, you need to change what you're doing when you're playing something. You notice that I changed some of the syncopation that I played. I didn't just play the melody, the exact rhythm. I changed some of the articulation specifically with more of those pop funk styles. And also I changed how much I laid back or pushed ahead depending on if it was laid back swing or the cha-cha or the two pop styles where I'm gonna be on the front edge of the beat a little more. Okay, so now we played a melody in a couple different styles and I changed the non-note musical elements to fit them. What if I improvised over that exact same backing track? Four choruses, concert F blues, same tempo, but four different styles. Well, here's what that sounds like. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it shed some light on these non-note musical elements that actually create music. The number one takeaway from this video is that whenever you're playing something, don't focus only on the notes. Focus on those non-note musical elements and it will make everything you play sound so much better. Just a reminder once again that I'm gonna be giving a live masterclass at the National Jazz Festival in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on Saturday, April 22nd. It's at the Pennsylvania Convention Center. And look out for more details as we get closer. If you have any other topics you'd like to see me cover here on the YouTube channel, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to click the link at the top of the description below to get my free masterclass, The Best Way to Create Melodic Solos. So many of you have gone through this. So many of you have told me that it's already changing your playing. And I know that if you haven't watched it yet, and you do watch it, it will change your playing and make you a better improviser. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.